This is the new 2023 Chevrolet Corvette Z06. 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 And it's truly amazing. <laughs> People are willing to pay 20 or 40 over MSRP. This is crazy. Discussions of pricing are laughable. So $30,000 over MSRP. $191. $100,000 over. Maybe $300 to a crazy person who wants one right now. Because nobody is going to get one of these cars at the sticker price. Well, take the money and run. We just having some fun. Whoa, wait. The release of the 2023 Chevrolet Corvette C8 Z06, arguably one of the most hyped events in all of history ever, and it was nothing but a marvelous disappointment. So we are in the presence of a C8 Z06 that we are gonna get into here momentarily. I just wanted to let you guys feast your eyes on this beautiful sight of siblings, if you will. Got a C8 Z51, very well specced on Boston's lowered full aero kit on this thing, Borla exhaust, and of course, a C8 Z06. Now the difference between these two cars is a lot. It's just that this one's up for grabs and this one is not. You can win this car right now by clicking the link below and grabbing yourself anything on enthusiast.com, which gets you automatically entered for this very well Spec Z51 with red interior. We've got aero on this thing, $10,000 staggered 2021 Vossens, 325 tires in the rear, Borla valve exhaust, a full aero kit, and a whole bunch of other mods. That one's not for grabs but I'm grabbing the wheel today. So today I'm greeted with this lovely piece of engineering. I cannot even believe that I have this thing. It's like a total unicorn. It's a novelty. And it's almost like I'm referring to it as the elusive C8 Z06. I believe I have the opportunity to be the voice of a lot of customers that are waiting impatiently for this car. So I'm gonna talk about this car today. I'm gonna give you my impressions of this car today. And we're gonna go out in a test drive of this car today to see if the hype is is really all that it truly was pushed out to be by the media and by all of these massive YouTubers that built up an amazing amount of media coverage on this thing. But we need to unpack some other things first. So first and foremost, I borrowed this car from my good friend, Sam. I actually had a post up on Instagram the other day, purely for fun scientific purposes to see if Chevrolet would respond to all of the people that wanna see one of these cars in my possession. But unfortunately they didn't respond. I honestly didn't expect them to, one in 10 chance. But anyway, I happened to have access to this car and Sam said, hey, take it for the day, have fun with it, see what it's all about and see if it's actually something that you really genuinely enjoy. Now I can say that he very much loves the car, but I'm going to give you guys my honest impressions of it in a little bit. That's not what I wanted to tell you. I have some serious bones to pick with Chevrolet on two primary things. And I, I guess you could maybe say three. So let's keep this short, simple. Let's keep this sweet. One, Chevy. You guys did an amazing job of building up the hype for the anticipation and excitement that all of Corvette enthusiasts were anticipating with the release of the Z06 with the mid-engine C8 platform. I know that I could not keep my eyes off of all the news updates about it coming out. So good job there. Good job partnering with a hand-selected group of big influencers, big YouTubers, big people with social media following to get it all out there in the later parts of 2022. You did a really, really good job of getting everybody Everybody excited. But now I need to speak on behalf of the enthusiast community. Now this is where I think the tides turn a little bit with all of the customers. You got them really excited. And into point number two, you really under delivered, tremendously under delivered. And I'm saying this not just from my own personal opinion, just from everybody else that I know that is patiently waiting to purchase one of these cars with absolutely no inclination as to when they can go about purchasing one from the dealer at MSRP. As somebody that's been nothing but a paid ambassador for your product, literally going out and paying for products than to just preach about them on YouTube, it's a big disappointment to see how much of a letdown it's been for the most loyal group of customers, arguably that you have, the Corvette enthusiasts, but also the full-bodied, red-blooded Americans that make up the brand heritage that comes from Chevy and Corvette and the whole General Motors fleet of vehicles in general. I can say that we are all extremely freaking frustrated. There are a lot of us that are still waiting to get one of these cars because we're just not willing to do what the market is almost 
forcing us to do if we really wanted to get one of the cars, which is pay an insurmountable markup on the vehicle. For instance, this car right here is specced at about $165,000. It's a 3LZ. I'll go into the specs with you shortly. This car arguably is priced on the market at over $200,000, which is over a $35,000 markup from the manufacturer suggested retail pricing, which is MSRP. Now, I actually happen to use to work for General Motors, and although the MSRP is the suggested retail price, manufacturer suggested retail price, it is kind of like a grounded ethos and ethics of the franchisee to the franchise or vice versa to sell vehicles at that of the MSRP because that is kind of the trading point of those vehicles in the market. Well, being that General Motors had none of their stuff together when they rolled out the production, supply, and availability of these cars and then the allocations to follow from the dealerships, some dealerships were able to get their hands on these cars, sold them at way over asking price with a few exceptions. There are dealerships out there that do not do that. And I'm actually in talks with dealerships that hold true to those values, which I can say really goes a very long way for me personally. But anyway, there are a lot of dealerships that get the car and say, hey, I know that they don't exist right now, so I'm just gonna throw this price super mega high and I'm just gonna kind of price gouge everybody until somebody, just one person decides to fork up the money. And that to me kind of sucks. It is quite entertaining though now to see how much customers are pushing back on these dealerships that are arbitrarily marking up these cars because they're just fighting back. They're saying, no, this sticker MSRP is 125,000, for instance, for a 2LZ, and you're asking 160 for it. That is just ridiculous. And ultimately you are selling an investment that is just not worth the investment. Granted, cars are depreciating assets. I get it. I don't think that these things are gonna be such a novelty that they're just gonna gonna appreciate like some of the hyper cars in the market. People are gonna get them, they're gonna drive them, they're gonna enjoy them, but I don't think anybody can take that large of a loss. Us as car enthusiasts are happy with the fact that we exchange value, monetary value for experience over time, and that's just part of it. There's a general rule of thumb that cars lose X number of dollars of value over time with age and mileage and wear and tear. Okay, that's fine, we will pay that expense, but we're not willing to pay triple, quadruple, or even 10 times that expense at the opportunity in exchange for the experience of ownership. And that's just my personal opinion. I need to put that out there into the world because I feel bad for a lot of people that are waiting patiently to get a car for what the car is worth. Now, with that being said, and that's completely out of the way, I had to get it out there. I had to put it into the world just to represent those people. Let's talk about the car. So this thing right here is sick. I'm not gonna lie, I am extremely excited like a kid in a candy store to have this beautiful blue 3LZ Z06 sitting in my pole building. I got a lot of opaque tones in here, the blacks, the grays, the silvers, and then we see this beautiful blue that shines off of these 18,000 lumen lights absolutely beautifully. Now, Sam has set this thing up with some minor aesthetic modifications, and that is just simple lowering pucks. The car does have a front lift, which is lowered down. It gave it a great stance. Really, really, really popped this thing off. Kind of closed up those wheel wells in the front, closed them up in the rear. And then he's got a set of very nice brushed finish anarchy wheels on this thing, which fit absolutely flawlessly from a stance perspective. I mean, what more could you ask for with setting up your car to give it the best road stance possible? Now, the presence of this thing is certainly substantially wider than that of, let's just say, the Z51 giveaway car that you guys have a chance to win by clicking that link in the description below. The hip flares come out wider. The door ducts are substantially more pronounced. The front fender flares have these cool arches that also have a wider stance present. The bumper is a little bit more pointed, a little bit more aggressive. The car has very nice carbon aero bits on it, although it is not the Z07 package. It does have this great front lip here. These very cool side skirts that actually kind of bow in to make stepping into the car and out of the car a little bit easier. And then of course on the back, it's got this elongated diffuser. Up upon the rear of the car, it's very much C8 until you look there where you see the center exit exhaust. Factory exhaust on the car right now, but it does have these black 
anodized tips, which look freaking sick. I really like it a lot. Now, this one happens to be the hard top convertible option. We're going to drop the top on this thing once we take it out for a little spin to see what it's all about. But being in the presence of the car is very cool. It has an insane presence. The stance of it is beautiful. The drop of it is fantastic. And it's just a really sick car, guys. I'm very excited outside of all that other stuff. And I hope that my impressions driving this thing live up to the excitement and the hype that everyone's made this car out to be, especially with the now naturally aspirated sub 700 horsepower flat plane crank V8. You know, everyone says it's kind of like the poor man's Ferrari, but it probably does some things better than Ferrari does. It's probably more comfortable. It's probably cheaper to service and it's not as hard on the conscious or the guilt when you're putting miles on it, ultimately doing what it's intended to do, which is driving. Cracking open the inside, we've got carbon, red accent stitching, black leather, and red inlays throughout the car. It's freaking cool, guys. Stepping into this thing, you drop down quite a bit. You're reminded with fresh, fresh sense of brand new leather. Carbon bits are literally everywhere. It's a sick finish. Obviously, you have all of your controls up on the side. I don't want to be redundant on this kind of stuff. You guys know what the inside of the C8 looks like. But what I can tell you is, in my personal opinion, it is one of the coolest cockpits to exist in any car that I've ever had the experience of driving because it is so driver focused. As a kid, I absolutely love Supras and they kind of had that same driver oriented cockpit. That is a really neat experience when you're behind the wheel, to say the least. You know, I would say it's not all about the speed of a car and the pure quickness of a car. It's all about the experience that you get behind the wheel of a car. And from what I understand, this one is very good at creating a super well-rounded experience to say the least. All right. So with that being said, I'm going to shut up. We're going to do a cold start inside the pole building, which should be pretty solid. The car's had a little bit of time to cool down since it got up here and I'm walking the wrong way. say that that cold startup brought a huge smile to my face ladies and gentlemen let's take this thing outside and have some fun with it i'm going to give you my very raw thoughts about this car obviously all the hype has got me kind of a little anxious to see how it is truthfully like will it live up to the expectation i don't know i'm more of a forced induction kind of guy not gonna lie but i'm going in with a pretty open mind all right so really cool this is really really cool and i'm gonna say that i'm very privy to the convertible already you lose the ability to see the engine in the back, but I really genuinely don't care about that. We know it's back there. It's not a big deal. The experience comes from right here. You can actually put your windows down, both go down automatically. And then you see in the rear view right there, you can drop that little window. And for anybody that's ever had a coupe, you know that that is a big deal because that immediately eliminates all the back pressure that pivots between the inside of the cabin. That creates a nice convection inside the car, just like we get in our pickup trucks I dig that a lot. Now, let's put that back up. And if we, I don't know, we're gonna go this way. No, if we pull it, put it in park, I think maybe the windows have to be up and we are going to try to drop the top. It's pretty wild. Thing went down in like a few seconds. I dig it, I dig it a lot. You get a lot more breathing room in the back, but it's not all that much crazier. Obviously with the target top, it comes off around here. You can still remove the top from the non-convertible, but the convertible gives you the ability to do it hands-free, which I kind of like. Z modes engaged, drive, and uh, we're in sport modes. So let's see what this thing's all about. Backfires, I'm digging it, I'm digging it. Okay, okay. It's not bad on the senses. <laughs> All right, 
right, it's fun. It's fun, I'm not gonna lie, that's cool. You know, the sound, like, I'm kind of having a hard time processing it because it's so much different than anything I'm used to that's American-made. But I always say difference is good. Difference helps you grow, it's an evolution. different like it's powerful it's linear not like rip your neck off fast like my z06 was but can't expect that it's a great driving car like the handling is fantastic shifts are quick takes the corners with ease are going to be made so much better when this thing's tunable. to drive and film, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yes, dude. I dig it. It's a good experience. It's not the fastest car in the world, but the experience, you got to rank that pretty high. It's got good torque coming out of turns. All right, now out of curiosity, let's see what happens when we throw it in drive mode, in Z mode, okay? Definitely wanting to stay, it's geared down to be expected. Not as fun as full manual mode. Still fun. Obviously you mash it and it shifts real quick, but all that experience comes out of driving it from the paddles. Although I will say like Z mode is pretty cool because it revs the gears out in auto. So if you don't feel like dealing with the shifting, but you still want the car to be funner to drive than that of its normal non-Z mode, I'm gonna call it old man mode, where it's valves closed, low shift points, not as much torque, not as much fun feels. Does a good job of it. It's enough of that. Z mode back on. That finger, oh. <laughs> What I can say with confidence is I can't wait for one of these many tuning companies to break through these cars. We all know it's gonna happen. Because with an exhaust, let's just say some high flow cats. That's a fireball. And these burbles, all fireballs. That's what that is going to be. It's gonna be, that's all that's going to produce and that will be absolutely rowdy. They'll probably get these transes shift just with a little bit more crackle, a little bit more pop, but I like it. I'm not, I'm not gonna be a hater, that's for sure. Although I wish it was a 6.2 liter twin turbo car. But that's just me. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my hat. <laughs> I'd like to have my stab at one, that is for sure. And that takes us to my final takeaways and impressions. I really like the car. It's cool. It's very different and it saddens me a little bit that, you know, you need to throw forced induction at one of these cars to make them an absolute animal. It's uh, one of those things that I had like a 900 horsepower car and that totally desensitized me, but they're not to be compared, although they shared the same name, Corvette. So I like it a lot. I could see why it would be hard to drive slow 
and I would definitely be averaging less than 10 miles per gallon every single where I went in that thing. I feel like a tune to make it burble a little bit more on decelerations would be really cool without doing that kind of small blip, but not, not an overabundance of that. An exhaust and maybe some high flow cats would make it a little bit louder, but still have that valve ability to close it up if need be. And obviously a six set of wheels and tires. Convertible, in my opinion, is the win though, without a question of a doubt, because you get to drop the top and have a car that looks like this. I mean, are you kidding me? I don't know if, uh, if there's a car that could look as cool as this one. I don't know, man. It definitely makes you feel a certain way when you're in its presence, to put it lightly. All right, ladies and gentlemen, cheers to a really fun day on the vlog. Thanks for riding with me for my opinionated review of the C806. I'm hoping that one day I can add one of these to my arsenal one day, one day soon at that point in time. I don't want you guys to forget about the fact that you can actually win a C8 Corvette $20,000 cash by clicking that link below. A can of this when you're a really sick car.